Hello, child of God. There are roughly one half billion tongue-talking Christians on the earth today. That is roughly one-fourth of the Christians in the entire world, which also means there are roughly one and a half billion Christians that do not manifest the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The purpose of this video is to address some of the wrong information and teachings concerning the gifts and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Lord Jesus Christ addressed the wrong teachings of the Sadducees and Pharisees with scripture and authority and the manifestation of miracles. Many religious people rejected his words and went on in error, but some listened and waited in the upper room for Almighty God to pour out his Holy Spirit upon them. Now, when I was a child in Sunday school and heard about Peter and Paul and the manifestation of miracles, healing, and deliverance, I was so astonished at how great these men of God were. And I thought, we really need some people like that today. My focus was on the greatness of the men as Christian superheroes. I did not understand at that time it was the Holy Spirit that they were baptized with that was the real superhero living in the body of a plain human, like a hand in a glove. And God's plan is to baptize the entire church with the Holy Spirit. And I'm speaking truth and love when I say that Almighty God wants you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and receive the gift of speaking in other tongues. The scripture tells us a lot about praying for each other and praying often. The scripture also tells us that Almighty God's plan is that each of us pray in other tongues as the Holy Spirit gives us the words. Just think about the advantage to your prayer life as I give you this example. The Holy Spirit speaks to your human spirit and not to your ears, but he tells you to say, Father God, I ask you to heal my mother of the cancer growing in her brain. But that prayer is in a language that you do not consciously know. So your brain does not understand what you're saying. Your mind does not interfere with God's plan by panic or unbelief or pride or the things you do not know or interfere in any other way. Almighty God hears the prayer and instantly heals your mother's brain cancer before it damages her. It is similar to the Holy Spirit sending a secret coded message to Almighty God using your voice. Since God's ways and thoughts are higher than ours, as the heavens are higher than the earth, our thoughts and ways are incredibly insignificant compared to his prayers. Let's move to the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. The exact moment that the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ left his bloody, beaten, tortured body on the cross. There was an earthquake and the veil in the temple that separated the Holy of Holies from all the people was ripped from top to bottom. It was this moment that the earthly temple became obsolete. Our high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, has sprinkled his eternal blood on the holy altar in heaven. The altar in heaven has been cleansed with the eternal blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Almighty God the Father was completely and totally satisfied with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and no other payment is needed and no other payment is wanted. The Holy Spirit has identified with the precious blood of Jesus on that heavenly altar and was sent by the Father on the day of Pentecost nearly 2,000 years ago. The entire earth has become his mercy seat. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. On that day of Pentecost, nearly 2,000 years ago, the apostle preached a sermon from Joel chapter 2, verse 28, concerning one of those Old Testament prophecies about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, saying, These people are not drunk, as you suppose. This is what God meant when he said on the last day, saith the Lord, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. When you can understand the power of the blood of Jesus on the altar in heaven, you can also understand how aggressively the Holy Spirit is seeking you for baptism. He can see the eternal blood of Jesus on the altar. 
In Joel chapter 2, 28, Almighty God the Father has chosen all flesh to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. The first mention of the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament was from John the Baptist. Can you imagine how powerfully he was preaching there in Matthew chapter 3 when he's preaching, I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear from his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan to be baptized by John, but John tried to deter him saying, I need to be baptized by you and you come to me. Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love, and with him I am well pleased. I'll just condense what John the Baptist said. He said, I baptize in water now, but after me, the Lord Jesus Christ will baptize in the Holy Spirit and in fire. Jesus identified with his own death, his own burial, and his own resurrection when he consented to be baptized in water. The Holy Spirit came down upon him like a dove and a voice from Almighty God in heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, of whom I am well pleased. Awesome! I think it's also important to note that Jesus sent his disciples out to baptize in water, but he himself never baptized any person in water. When a born-again Christian is baptized in water, he's making a public statement to God, to God's angels, to mankind, to Satan, to all the demons, that he is identifying with the death of the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus chose all 12 of his disciples and then breathed upon them the Holy Spirit, commanding them to receive ye the Holy Spirit. This was an infilling of the Holy Spirit for power. But he also commanded these same disciples, minus Judas Iscariot, of course, to remain in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit came upon them. So now we see Jesus breathing the Holy Spirit upon them when he walked with them. And then later on the day of Pentecost, he baptized them in the Holy Spirit. You do not need a super spiritual, spooky, anointed pastor that can walk on water to pray for you to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus is the only baptizer in the Holy Spirit and not the pastor. Try to keep in mind the two golden cherubim in the tabernacle. Keep your faces looking down at the blood on the mercy seat. Don't let yourself be distracted or redirected from this truth. The eternal God can see the blood of the Lamb on the altar in heaven. He has already sent the Holy Spirit to baptize you. There is no doubt that it is God's perfect will for you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. It is the Lord Jesus Christ that is your baptizer in the Holy Spirit. Regardless of the righteousness of the pastor praying for you, it is the blood of Jesus that has made atonement for you. This is also regardless of whether you have stopped gossiping or smoking or any of those other naughty habits that you're struggling with. When you become a born-again Christian, you are a sinner that Jesus has washed in his blood. What got you that born-again experience was not your own righteousness, but as a gift from God, unearned and undeserved. You simply received Jesus by faith. Your sins are forgiven. Your name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You were not required to prove yourself holy or deserving before you received the gift of salvation. So make up your mind now. There is no more payment needed or wanted for you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of speaking in other tongues. You're a blood-bought child of Almighty God. You do not receive the Holy Spirit because you're doing things right, and you're not rejected by the Holy Spirit because you're doing things wrong. It is the blood on the altar in heaven. Remember Jesus' letter to the church. Jesus is standing at your door knocking. 
And you must just open and allow him to come in. He does not choose you because of your personal righteousness, which, by the way, is just filthy rags before the holy God. There is no waiting. There is no fasting. There is no praising. There is no giving. There is no begging. There is no tarrying. There is no confessing. There is no other religious practice or religious exercise that will convince the Lord Jesus Christ to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and give you the gift of tongues. He has already said yes. He cannot say no. Almighty God sees the blood on the altar in heaven and said yes. He cannot say no to you because of the blood. The answer has been yes since the day of Pentecost almost 2,000 years ago. Can you really picture the Holy Spirit, whom is always in total agreement with the Father, telling the Father, Yes, I see the blood on the altar, but I have chosen not to give this particular Christian the gifts of the Spirit. No, I'm not mocking the Holy Spirit here. I'm telling you, maybe what you think to be true does not make sense. God did not single you out to not give you tongues or any other gift. The evidence of God's love is the blood. The evidence of God's covenant is the blood. The evidence of your salvation is the blood. The evidence of God's will is the blood. The evidence God wants you to receive the gifts of the Spirit is the blood. The purchase price was paid. The packaging was paid. The handling was paid. The shipping was paid. And Jesus is knocking on your door trying to deliver the gifts to you. Open the door to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can pray right now. Whatever you ask the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it will be done for you. If you wish, I can lead you in prayer right now. Just pray with me, but put your faith in God to work for you. Almighty God, yeah, just go ahead, pray, pray with me, pray after me. Almighty God, forgive me my every sin, my every trespass, all of my doubt and unbelief, all the things I've learned wrong, forgive me. Wash me in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Baptize me now in the Holy Spirit. And give me the gifts of the Spirit. Give me the gift of speaking in other tongues now. And help me to speak the words now. I open the door to you, Lord Jesus. And receive these gifts from you as done in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, child of God, the Holy Spirit is speaking to your spirit, not to your ear. Just speak out the words he's saying to you. Don't repeat after me, but I'm going to pray for you. Just speak out whatever he's saying to you. Whatever those words are, just worship him, praise him, speak it out. The word says you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Do not defy the word of God. Just speak it out. There's a pillow of fire on you now. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise you, Jesus. Glory and honor and praise be unto you, Lamb that was slain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.